Now, if you had no arm rotation, which means this logo would stay pointed this way, no forearm rotation, no shoulder rotation, and this just kept coming forward, that club face, no matter how much you unhinged it, would always be pointed too far to the right. Yes. I mean, there's no getting around the idea that from here, that logo has got to go from pointed over away from you to towards the target and then to left of the target. Hey guys, so before we dive in, I want to make sure you guys check out kagornogolf.com and check it out again if you already have the online lessons we have at kagornogolf.com where you're able to send in your swing videos is exactly what we need, exactly what you need to take your game to the next level. I'm telling you, it's equally as effective, if not more effective than in-person coaching. We guide you through what the priorities are, what drills to do. We give you specific feels. We tell you exactly what to do, how many reps, how many days per week, very specific plan to take your game to the next level and unlike taking a lesson once a week you have 24 access to us so we can guide you along the way you're going to absolutely love it it's what you need to take your game to the next level would love for you to check out glorygolf.com we'll put that link down in the description down below all right guys in today's video we're going to be talking about the one thing that all good ball strikers do a little bit of secret sauce that we're going to talk about in today's video, obviously you see here Miss Carl over to my right. If you guys, a lot of you guys know who Carl is already. She's a fit golfer girl on Instagram and YouTube. If you haven't seen her stuff yet, I would hop over and check it out. Really awesome stuff. Fitness stuff, mobility stuff, strength stuff. A lot of awesome videos that you guys and gals all need. So we're going to put that link in the description, first link down below to head over. Um, Carl, let's talk about this one piece, right, that all good golfers do. I'm going to take a setup position if you'd hop over for a second. And one of the things for us when we go play golf, right, mm -hmm. the primary objective, one of the things we all struggle with is I've got a target out there, I've got a flag, and I need to hit this golf ball towards the flag. Yeah, right? that's, that seems like a, Big that deal. seems like golf summarized. <laughs> I like that. And it's hard, right? A lot of us that come out, if we walked up and down the range, we would see people missing right, mm -hmm. missing left, missing high, low, et cetera. And probably you and I both, when we go play ourselves and have seen, the majority of players miss to the right. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Yes. And the majority of players, if I have a flag, like regardless of where it is, would miss short. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't know how many times you go play, I always make the joke, like, I don't know the last time I golfed with an amateur player who consistently went over the green with their iron shots. Like, you just don't see it. No. It doesn't exist. No. Come up short all the time. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, okay, so if we know, hey, the goal is to hit it at the target, we want to hit the ball solid, we know a lot of golfers miss right and miss short, like what's going on, what do the good players do, why they don't do that, yep. and then why do we, um, and higher handicap players, do that a lot? And the answer resides within the club, right, the club and the club face. Mm -hmm. Specifically, the loft of the club and the face angle, right? So you and I both like fairly smart people, I think. If we're hitting towards, let's say, that green flag out there, mm -hmm. and I come down here to hit the ball, at the moment I hit it, my club face has to be pointed roughly towards? The flag. The green flag, right? Yes. Okay. If my club face is pointed somewhere to the right of that, that ball's probably going? Right. Very good. Okay, good. So now, this is, it, a, is this a trick question? No, this is it. This is that passed. simple. This I is passed. that simple. <laughs> So wherever my club face points, roughly, the moment I strike the ball is kind of roughly where it's going to go. So if we go play, and let's keep this simple, and my ball is missing to the right a lot as a mm -hmm. right-handed golfer, and I'm missing short a lot, I need to do something to be able to square that club face up, right? Yes. Now, I think a lot of us like to think we want this golf swing where there's like less timing, right? Just like swing, not think about anything, the ball automatically goes there. But what if that doesn't work? What if you're playing golf, and it goes to the right. One thing, and the one thing that all these good ball strikers do, is they're able to consistently square the club face and lower the dynamic loft. Mm -hmm. And there's a little bit of a secret way as to how they do that, which is what we call, during the downswing, lead arm supination. Now, there's really two parts to this, but if we look at, like, if Carl, you come over here with me, and we just hold out, like, let's hold out your lead arm in front, like so, let's just go thumb up, right? So this, let's just say this is neutral when we have our arm hanging. If we get the thumb pointed to the right with the palm down, you and I know that's supination, mm -hmm. right? Or um, pronation during the backswing, rather, sorry. So my palm goes down, pronation, as we switch this way, that would be supination. So this palm up motion, let's go back to thumbs up. So from here to here, we go palm down, that's supination. 
Now, if we bring a club out in front of us with it, and we hold a club up with that, and we do the same sort of motion, so we have the club palm down to the right, and then we go um, palm down to the left, good. And if I hold that in front, you can relax. If I hold that in front and I do that same motion where I have this supination, that's a piece that's essentially closing the door, right? That brings my club from back here to the golf ball and squares the club face up. And that's happening with the lead arm, huh? It's happening with the lead arm. Hmm. So I can have, and I can feel some of that with some trail arm pronation, a little bit of palm down, but I think most of us feel that and sort of um, the leader of that would be the lead arm motion. Mm -hmm. So if we go down here, if we both, let's say we get during the downswing, let's just go right next to me, Carl, with this. Mm -hmm. If we have this to the point where we're here during the downswing and the club's parallel to the ground. Yeah. Now we've got our logos pointed roughly straight away from us. Mm -hmm. And our club faces are both pointed basically straight away. Now, if we took that, in fact, let's take your setup to the ball here. If you get back in that same position, I think this will be a good visual and we get into the downswing. Now, if you had no arm rotation, which means this logo would stay pointed this way, no forearm rotation, no shoulder rotation, and this just kept coming forward, that club face, no matter how much you unhinged it, would always be pointed too far to the right. Yes. I mean, there's no getting around the idea that from here, that logo has got to go from pointed over away from you to towards the target and then to left of the target. So math, definitely not my like MO, but I think if it's rotated over here to the target, that's like 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. Mary, is that right? We're getting about 90. Now, if we get it from over here to behind you, that's 180 degrees, right? From over there to over yes. there. I think I'm getting that math right. So think about that for a second. During your downswing, no matter what grip type you have, right? No matter what sort of wrist conditions, your back of the hand and club face has to rotate 180 degrees mm -hmm. from there to there. Yeah, that's a lot. And I feel like, you know, you said that you feel it. As yeah. an amateur golfer, I don't feel it. Right. And if you, and I know for you sometimes you get some of the hooks left with the longer clubs. Yes. But I would bet at times then you could also get some like high short right shots. Of course. Right. Let's flip flop spots. Let me hop in here for one sec, Carl. So when we come down here into the point of feeling, because that's a good point, right? Yeah. And like all the time, if we're making a swing and I'm hitting it at my green flag all the time, then you don't have to. Yeah. Then you're okay, right? But I would say for the majority of us, especially if the ball's missing to the right, we do need to actively add that in. And I would say those would be good checkpoints. By the time you get down to club parallel, your logo should be roughly pointed away from you. And then by the time you get into the follow through, the logo should be pointed to the left. Now there's gonna be some caveats, right? Someone who has a weaker grip pattern, I won't mention anyone's name, but let's say someone has a weaker grip pattern. Wow, I feel, I feel attacked. Okay, and the hands, <laughs> the hands are turned a little more counterclockwise. Now, when that player would come down, typically the club face is going to be more here. So it's going to be a little bit more toe up, right? I would prefer the club face to be a little bit more toe down here to make life easier, but weak grip patterns going to be toe up. So from here, the player with the face that's, I mean, hopefully it doesn't get on this side of the shaft, but if the toe's more up, you're going to need to add the most supination, right? That player, mm -hmm. I, whoever that is, yeah, is going to need to get the back of the hand curling down and supinating the most, the fastest, and probably the earliest, mm -hmm. right? Now, the player who has the stronger grip or has the face more tilted down, so would be like uh, Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka. Also the opposite of me, got it. The opposite of that person <laughs> with the weaker grip pattern. From there, now, can they just go right to impact with absolutely no supination? No, they can't, right? Mm -hmm. Even these players with closed faces, no timing. No, like you still have to have some of this supination pattern in to the point where the grip points to the left. The question is, how much, right? How much and how early. And you bring up a good point too, Carl, to the point of the timing of it. While I'm saying the logo away here to here would be good, like get the club face slightly toe down here, pointed away from me, and slightly toe down or pointed straight away from me in the follow through. For most of us, that has to happen earlier from the top, right? So like, even though we see it later on, you're probably feeling that like- Yeah, and quite, this is happening so fast. So how so can fast. we make sure that we actually do it? Do you have any, any tips for us? I have a couple of them. Okay. So the first thing I would look at is the ball pattern, right? Some things, and I'm a big like use video, right? Don't guess with it. But this is one where I think ball flight's king. So I've got a target out there. Let's say from here, I'm going towards the right edge of the building. Mm -hmm. Now, if I, what I said is true, which is good players square the face and de-loft it. And a lot of that's through supination. The more I do the supination, the more I should de-loft it and close the face. 
So if I deloft it and close the face more, the ball should go left. Mm -hmm. So if I go to that target and I'm gonna try and add max supination on my first one, this is the how part, I'm gonna do it the earliest and I'm gonna feel it the hardest with my arm rotation. And I wanna see where the ball flight goes. So let's go ahead and do one for me where I feel that rotation. Now I would say that's probably a 20 yard pull hook. Is that fair? Maybe 20 yards left of the building there? Yeah. So for me, all else equal with my swing, relative to what I have in there, I know that if I max out my supination on that ball, it goes 20 yards left. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm a golfer who's been hitting it right for like a year, 10 years, 20 years, I should be in love with that. I should be so happy that I changed my ball flight, right? But let's say I'm not. Now I know my max supination goes 20 yards left. So let's try maybe 80%. So let's go 80% of the supination. So I'm feeling my arm rotating early during the downswing and a lot, uh, but I'm gonna go 80% this time. So I'm at the building. Let's do 80%. And now that was also a slight pull draw, but I would say that was probably more 10 yards left. Yep. Would you agree? So I kind of cut it in half. So now I know 80% lead arm supination goes 10 yards up. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah, I see what you're doing. So now I might go 50%, yep. right? So you have to test it out, find gotta what's right for out. you. You gotta test it out. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's probably the easiest way. Now that's given my current golf swing. Mm -hmm. I might do something else earlier. I might change the grip for that player, right? I might do something to make their life easier. But if it was a, hey, change my ball flight right away, yeah. there's no rule against us being allowed to think arm rotation. Mm -hmm. Like it's a bad like, um, people think about it because it adds timing, right? But if you hit the ball to the right for 10 years, you don't have the timing down anyway, right? That's right? Like you have a problem. So not you in particular, but a golfer needs to be able to add that, that arm supination. So that would be the main thing I would say, Carl. I would say, hey, do it, test it to 100%. And if you've been hitting it to the right, hook some left, that's good fine middle. And I would all the time on the golf course, you see good players like with the lead arm only, kind of back to here to here. I've actually seen that. Right? It's funny. All the time you see it. Yes. The player goes like this. Now, do I think those players are saying, all right, I saw Eric's YouTube video, him and Carl were talking about something. 100%. Yeah, that's of what course they're doing. they saw that. But they're just doing this naturally, right? Yeah. They're just doing this, this, this rotation. And so I like having a little bit of arm rotation. Now, someone's going to say, but Eric, right, you've done videos. I thought that's too much rotation. Well, if you're a player who does that and they have the supination, the ball hooks less, mm -hmm. then of course you would feel less of that. Yep. Right. If I say, hey, Carl, do this, and you're boomeranging it 60 yards, I say, okay, no, no. Like, now you need to feel less supination. Yeah. But the point is you should find the timing and feel the timing within it. Lead arm only swings, test it with the ball flight pattern. And if you are the 10% or so goes the opposite way, then, then feel the opposite. You could even, if you're hooking too much, mm -hmm. you could feel the face of being a little bit more towards the sky, right? Find a middle ground with it. Yeah. Lead arm supination, does that all make sense? So it's all about experimenting with your own swing. Just think about that glove. Yes. Think about the logo just, and experiment. See what yeah, let's works hit, you do a couple. Let's hit a couple with you in there. Do it. Now let's do 100% on the first one. Mm -hmm. So like if that's our if that's our kind of end of the building, mm -hmm. and you boomerang one to the left, that'd be okay. All so right. it'd be max lead arm supination. And if we do it, perfect. So that's probably that's pull hook that's to the left like me. That's about seven million yards. To yeah, the left. that's left. So that was about 100% for you. Yeah. Yep. Now let's go like 50%. And we're going to find out if you're the golfer who already has too much and might need to feel the opposite way. Let's go 50% supination. Beautiful. So now that should tell you right away when you do 50% and it goes to that degree that you are one of the small percentage of golfers on the other end of the spectrum who has too much yep. face closing. And you would actually feel on your way through basically the opposite. So when you come through, you would feel like you were sort of slowing down the mm -hmm. supination. So like your back of that left hand is probably feeling like a little more up toward the sky compared to, to the left. So for you, you would feel a little bit more neutralizing. So show me a follow through one time, just from here. Yeah, you, you would likely feel a little bit more of that. Mm -hmm. Now for your case, we're gonna talk in a little bit about why that is, but let's do one where you feel like you're holding off the supination. And now I don't, now that was much better direction wise. Yeah. A little bit of a pull draw, but not bad. Now I would bet if you spent some time on it, a mm -hmm. couple range sessions, and you even learned the degree of which you did that and where the ball flight went, that it wouldn't take long until you're like, okay, for me, where I'm at, I need to feel like I'm not doing any supination or I'm doing 20% or 30% yeah. 
I don't think that's adding timing. I think that's you learning the degree of which you need to do a movement given your current swing to like immediately change your ball pattern. And every single golfer I've ever seen ever measured has lots of supination, mm -hmm. any 3D system, even Dustin Johnson close club faces, and they have way more than the amateur player. And that's why they're able to square the face and de-loft and the amateur players aren't. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, just from trying that out, I can tell you that it, the timing doesn't really change. I just, you know, I just, you have to be really mindful of the wrist, I guess. Of the yeah, hand, exactly. It? But the same, it's the same swing. And the thing is, Carl, like, Millions of golfers, mm -hmm. when they would feel that supination, like you, you did supination and immediately pull hooked it. Yeah. Millions well, and millions. Straight. Yeah. But yep. they, they wouldn't be able to do that. Yep. They wouldn't be able to get the first ball to hook to the left. So for them, they need to think manually, consciously that much of it yeah. to probably get the ball from going 20 yards to the right to just straight. Mm -hmm. And that's the crazy part about it. So that's supination. I think those are some really good ways to train that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, saw us training it. It is what all of the best players do, whether you see it on there or not. They do it more than amateur players. If you want to get the ball from going to the right to straight, we want arm supination. If you guys enjoyed this video, we're going to put a card on the screen, similar style video. You guys will love that. If you want to check out Cogorno Golf, I would love to work with you. Carl's info is in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching.